Hello, darling, and welcome back to my Stardew Valley series, episode three. In this video, I will be exploring Fool and providing you tips, tricks, and helpful information to improve your Stardew Valley experience. With that said, let's go on with the video. On day one, I started by clearing the withered crops, tending to my animals, then headed to P-Dog to purchase a few seeds. I purchased roughly 110,000 golds worth of seeds, knowing that this passive income will be very delicious later on in the game. I then collected my still watering can from Clint and got to work planting my crops. One thing I would recommend for players is to not purchase any bok choy. This is because it's not needed for the community center and you'd be better off planting more cranberries or pumpkins. This process of planting, watering, and fertilizing took all day, but I promise you it will be worth it later on. On day two, I visited Clint to upgrade my axe to gold, and then I went fishing to collect a walleye for the community center. After donating my findings, I finally repaired the bridge down by the ocean so I'd be able to find a sea urchin one day for the community center too. On day three, I decided to brave the skull cavern to attempt reaching floor 100. A quick tip is to make sure you're always checking the television to see whether or not the luck is good or bad as this can make all the difference. While in Skull Cavern, I made my way down to floor 73 and I found a cowboy hat. Fortunately, I did find two prismatic shards while mining, which is great because I was starting to get annoyed using the obsidian edge. So I decided to leave with my prismatic shard in hand. I then took my prismatic shard to the special spot in the desert and received a galaxy sword. My precious. On day four, I visited Clint to upgrade my pickaxe to gold. Having an iridium pickaxe is really important when trying to traverse the skull cavern as you can break the rocks with one swing. So I wanted to do this sooner rather than later. Feeling a little lost without my pickaxe, I spent the rest of the day cutting trees to prepare for the cold season that lurks in the distance. On day five, I planted some hardwood seeds with tree fertilizer in preparation for the home upgrades. It's important that you plant the hardwood seeds as you can only get a maximum of 18 per day from the stumps in the secret forest. I then headed down to the beach as I wanted to reacquaint myself with fishing. On day six, I headed to the community center to place my three apples and two pomegranates in their respective bundles. After doing this, the only remaining items I needed to donate were the remaining full crops, a truffle, and the snow foraging items. I then visited Robin to request an upgrade on my barn so I could start to buy some piggies. I then collected my gold pickaxe from Clint, collected five iridium bars from home, and requested my pickaxe to be upgraded to the final form of iridium. Feeling accomplished and satisfied, I then spent the rest of this day cutting trees to create a strong surplus for winter. On day seven, I gave some gifts to people to start building relationships with the townsfolk, and then I spent the rest of the day getting some more wood. On day eight, my first load of cranberries were ready to harvest. With the taste of money on my lips, I collected my iridium pickaxe and sent my gold axe to be upgraded to iridium too. I was watching a series on Netflix at this time and I wasted this day doing boring tasks on the farm. Just a quick reminder to those who have made it to fall, it's okay to have relaxing days where you do little to nothing. After I slept, I made 75,000 gold from my first harvest of cranberries. Considering I spent 110,000 gold on every seed, I was already well on my way to make a substantial profit. On day nine, I decided to clear out the farm so I could see the space I have to work with and then headed around the town to give people gifts. I entered the Stardrop Saloon and saw a lonesome man by himself. So I decided to buy Shane a beer because I'm a pusher, Katie. I'm a pusher. I did feel super guilty, however, as I felt like an enabler. So I went home and wallowed in my guilt. That was so not fetch. Gretchen, stop trying to make fetch happen. It isn't gonna happen. On day 10, I bought four cute little piggies from Marnie named Oinkers, Porky, Trotters, and Schnuffles. I then headed to Clint to collect my new Iridium Axe. With my bee house layout nearly complete, I decided to spend the rest of the day mining. On day 11, I visited Robin and requested an upgrade on my home. I then spent the rest of the day going around the map collecting blackberries. I'm not quite sure why I did this, but maybe I can turn them into wine at some point and make some money from them. To be honest, around this time of the game, I'm already so far advanced that it's a case of waiting for winter to come so I can finish the community center and start planning my ideas for Ginger Island. If you don't know what Ginger Island is, you will need to stick around as I will be for sure taking you on a journey. Despite having around 500 hours in this game, I have never spent a long time on Ginger Island as my friends start to get bored and stop playing around this time. So my content will be authentic and explorative when it comes to that. On day 12, I visited P 
year to plan the cost for my fruit tree layout within my greenhouse once I receive it. I gave some gifts around and visited Sandy for the first time. While there, I purchased some beet seeds so I could complete Mr. Key's quest. If you don't know what this is, I will show you later on in the episode, but if you want to plan ahead, you will need one battery, one rainbow shell, five beets, and one solar essence. I went back to the mines to collect some more coal. On day 13, I gave out some gifts, planted some more saplings, and cut down some unsuspecting trees. On day 14, I received my first lot of fairy rose honey, and I was so excited. Not only that, but my pumpkins had finally grown too. After a quick harvest, I rushed to the community center to restore the pantry and unlock the greenhouse. I then headed to Pierre and purchased two apricot saplings. My idea for the greenhouse is to have three of every fruit tree, and if you remember, I already purchased one apricot sapling from the traveling merchant. When I returned to my farm, I realized I had a whole bunch of pumpkin seeds left over, and if I didn't plant them today, I wouldn't be able to plant them at all. I therefore decided to expand my farm even further and create a little pumpkin patch at the bottom. If I could go back in time and do this over again, I would have made an even larger area for my seeds. Hey! Some people fish and some people plant. If you prefer to fish, then you're clearly just wrong as farming is far superior. I said what I said. On day 15, I realized the last fish I needed to catch was the ghost fish, which can be found by either killing the ghosts in the mines or by fishing in the mines too. I will provide some information in the description about which fish spawn at which levels in the mine. I then headed to the community center to restore the fish tank before heading into the wilderness to collect more wood. On day 16, I grabbed nine items for my grange display and headed to the fair. If you're struggling to come first, there is an actual point system which you may need to adhere to if you want to win. Let me briefly explain. To receive first place at the Grange display, you need a minimum of 90 points. If you enter the competition, you instantly start with 14 points. If you want to maximize your points, you should always enter 9 items as you will receive 9 points. Even if you have to put a rubbish item in, it will still gain you points. The competition recognizes 8 item categories. Animal products, artisan goods, cooking, fish, foraging or flowers, fruits, minerals, and vegetables. For each item in a different category, you will receive an extra five points. However, this is capped at 30 points. So realistically, you only need items in six of the categories I listed. Finally, the sell price of an item is taken into consideration for your points. Any iridium quality item that sells for or costs more than 200 gold will grant you the maximum amount of eight points for that one product. With that information out of the way and me winning first place, obviously, I decided to gamble my winnings. It's clear that everyone knows how unbiased and safe gambling would be in a calm world like Saju Valley, right? Wrong. At the fair, you should always bet on green. The odds for this game is rigged, 75 to 25, so you are way more likely to win if you choose green. That being said, it can sometimes land on orange, so don't bet all your points. Otherwise, you will need to play some of the mini games in the fair. Once I collected 2,000 points, I bought my star drop and had thoughts of baguette, and then I decided to earn more points to purchase the cute witchy rare crow. After this eventful day, I sold some cranberries and headed to bed. On day 17, I visited the skull cavern and made my way down to floor 120. 29 before heading home feeling exhausted. On day 18, so many goodies were ready to be harvested, and I could feel Kylie Jenner shaking in her boots knowing I would surpass her as the youngest self-made billionaire. Now that the greenhouse was completed and just in time before winter, I planted my fruit trees in this order. You can pause or come back to the video if you want to copy this layout. This provides room for three of each tree and the fruit will produce every single day of every single season. On day 19, my sweet gem berries had grown, so I headed to the secret woods to collect another star drop from the shrine. I then decided to visit Clint, and somewhere along the lines, most likely on day 17, I sent my hoe to be upgraded to steel. After I collected this, I sent my watering can to be upgraded to gold. I then planted four rare seeds inside the greenhouse, which I received from placing the rare seeds inside my seed makers, then headed to bed. On day 20, I completed the bulletin board by placing inside the last item, which was a truffle. I then decided to go ahead and complete Mr. Key's quest. You start by traveling past the bus inside the tunnel and placing a battery inside this little power box. Then, you have to head to the train station and place the rainbow shell inside this weird deposit bin thing. After that, you are prompted to leave five beets inside Mayor Lewis's fridge. Once you've completed this, you must then travel to Calico Desert and feed the dinosaur bones one piece of solar essence before having to head back home to check inside your log pile. Once you've done that, you are now able to get past the man inside Sandy's shop and go gambling. Ooh la la. On day 21,
2021, I visited Clint to collect my gold watering can. I then decided to crack open some artifact troves, requesting my watering can to be upgraded to Iridium, and pretty much mindlessly played for the rest of the day. I was probably invested in something I was watching on my phone, and so I wasted the day away as usual. On day 22, I headed around the town to give people gifts, and then I spent the rest of the day cutting trees. On day 23, I collected my Iridium watering can, and then spent the rest of the day in the mines trying to collect some more coal. On day 24, the day I wished never happened because it literally made me want to quit this game from how bored I became, I sent my hoe off to be upgraded to gold before heading to the casino. When I tell you I was there for two hours of my life just spinning slot machines, I'm not even lying. I literally sat in my secret lab gaming chair, which you can use code TORN for 0% off, and mindlessly clicked for two bloody hours until I eventually reached the goal of 100,000 points. After I looked at the rewards and their costs, I was grossly unsatisfied and decided to head home and cry. On day 25, I spent the day giving gifts to some lucky people and then headed to bed early. On day 26, I collected my golden hoe, gave out some more gifts, and then decided to spend the rest of the day mining. On day 27, I tended to my animals, tidied up my farm, and waited for the Stardew Spirits Eve. In case you're not aware, you can actually find a golden pumpkin which sells for 2,500 gold and is also a loved gift for everyone at this event. Just follow the pathing path I have taken and you should find the reward. On day 28, I collected my final harvest of cranberries and spent the rest of the day cutting trees. The reason I have spent so much time this season cutting trees is due to the trees not being able to grow in winter without tree fertilizer. After selling all of my stored up goodies, I went to bed and was so excited to see I had made 597,000 coins. This means I can make some serious improvements to my farm over winter, but also upgrade my house in the future to prepare for a wine cellar so I can make some Iridium quality wine. From day 1 to day 28, you have been with me every step of the way and I'm so excited for you to see what the cold season has in store for me. Usually at this point in the video I'd be saying, here is a preview, but unfortunately my life has been really busy at the moment and I haven't had much time to play more of the Stardew Valley. However, I promise you I will play the game and produce the content to upload the next video so you guys have an entire year overview of my Stardew Valley experience. Thank you guys so much for watching this video as always and please leave a like and subscribe if you found the content entertaining. With that said, have a great week guys. Bye!